It's been a long time, hasn't it? Hey, what's up guys, Zenith, back from the dead, here to bring you what is by a long shot the most requested video I've ever gotten in the history of my channel. Now, it's partially because of that that this video is so delayed. I've received countless comments asking me to go over these products, so I really want to give the most thorough overview of these that I possibly could. As anybody who follows me knows, I unfortunately was not able to really work on any videos over the course of fall semester, so I really tried to use these as much as I could as soon as fall semester ended. But most of my first takes of the video, I just felt were incomplete, didn't have all the information I wanted to include. Then the fact that so many of my early takes were done so long ago, I was wearing things like Christmas sweaters and referencing that the fact that the semester just ended. But now I'm at the point where the new semester is just about to begin, so life is kind of funny like that. Anyway, I won't waste any more of your time rambling. Let's get into talking about the wired and wireless controllers by PowerA for Nintendo Switch. Now, of course you guys know I wanna maintain transparency with you guys at all times. So just due to the countless amount of comments I've received, I reached out to a PowerA representative myself and received the wired and wireless versions of the PowerA controller for free in exchange for an unbiased review. I made sure that point was clear and I'm not being paid anything outside of being sent these controllers to use and review. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So as the timestamps indicate, I'm breaking this video down into different sections. At this point, there are many reviews out here for these products. And because a lot of the people that are going to be viewing this video are going to be doing so, to see whether or not these are just good general controllers for the Nintendo Switch, I'm going to be going over them from a general perspective first. Now at this point, there are a lot of reviews out there about these products, a lot of which are very good. I don't have any affiliation with this guy, but one review I can recommend. I will link in the description below. I personally really liked it because the guy goes as far as to take apart the wireless controller and just go really in depth with it. So it's no surprise that I really appreciate that. So because there's already footage of the wireless version out there, towards the end of the video, I will be opening up the wired version. He goes over these controllers in great detail, but more from a general perspective. In this video is of course, looking at these controllers from a more competitive Smash Brothers perspective. Anyway, to keep it short and sweet, after countless hours of gameplay, I have to say I agree with basically every review that's been put out there. As far as acting like a pro controller is concerned, these controllers both fill that criteria very well. Now, I'm not gonna say that it's perfect, but I really like the approach that Powerade took in designing a pro controller that mirrors basically the layout of a standard GameCube controller. Of course, it shouldn't be a shocker that I am a huge fan of the GameCube controller's design and layout. So using these controllers in both Smash and other games really brought back memories of playing on my actual GameCube. In fact, I actually don't know where my official Nintendo Pro controller is because I've effectively replaced it with this controller. Even going outside of Smash, any Switch games that I play, Mario Kart, Breath of the Wild, with the exception of Splatoon and other shooters, just because I don't like playing shooters on a GameCube controller, I basically use this wireless controller for all of them. So let's talk a little bit about why. Well, besides having the layout of a controller that I love, the wireless version of the controller does everything that a regular pro controller would. It's able to wake up the Switch. You can see it kind of looks like a lot of the third-party GameCube controllers I review in that it has two Z buttons, which are really L and R in addition to Z, L, and Z, R. And by having clicky analog sticks and all the face buttons that you would have on a pro controller, this controller does everything that you would want out of a pro controller. It syncs just as easy and well, and every game that's compatible with the Pro Controller you can use with this. The Switch just recognizes this as a regular Pro Controller, meaning in Smash Bros, if you're creating your custom layout, you have an extra button to work with if you wanna take advantage of that. And coming in at $50 and $25, both being cheaper than the official Nintendo Pro Controller, it makes for a great cheaper alternative, especially if you like the GameCube design. Now, if you follow me, you know that I go over a lot of third-party controllers, and two of the main issues I have with most of them are poor build quality and having stiff sticks and buttons with huge dead zones. So I was absolutely relieved when I used these and figured out that although the buttons and sticks are stiffer than what you will find on a official Nintendo GameCube controller, even right out of the box. They are easily better than at least 90% of the third-party controllers that I've used. Like I said, I use this controller for all of my Switch games, including playing a lot of Smash on it. I've unlocked all the characters using this controller. So it's actually even gotten time to break in and compared to this controller, which I've used a little less, over time as everything gets worn down, just like a regular GameCube controller would, it does break in and everything starts to feel better. However, the feel is just not as good as an official controller. So if you're a tournament goer and you wanna perform your absolute best and you need all the precision, I wouldn't recommend this, but for every other user, which should be more than 95% of the consumer base for Nintendo Switches, this is more than perfect. The wireless controller has a hefty feel to it and that is unfortunately in a big part 
to the way that it's powered. Yes, in 2019, we still have controllers that require batteries to work, and that comes with all the ups and downs of using batteries, as in, if you need a quick charge and you have batteries on site, you have instant power. However, you need batteries for it to work. Battery life is super long on these. It comes with two Duracells, which I really appreciate. However, I actually put generic brand batteries in, and these have blasted me this whole way. And just having the batteries in this controller gives it a nice weight to it. Unfortunately, the same can't be said for the wired controller. Again, the buttons and the sticks don't feel stiff. They don't have dead zones like a lot of bad third-party controllers you would find would have. I can definitely appreciate having a detachable cable. The wired version comes with a very long, pretty durable cable. It has a Velcro strap for easy travel. That's a micro USB, so a lot of the cables that you own already, provided they can fit in the slot, will be able to work with this controller. Definitely a pretty cool indirect feature. The fact that it doesn't have batteries makes it feel just a little too light. However, if that's not something that's going to bother you, there's no downside really to it. Like I said, functionally, they're both the same. They both have the same amount of buttons and everything. With the exception of the wireless motion that is only found on the wireless controller, unfortunately, the wired controller does not have this feature that is also found in the official Nintendo Pro controller, meaning for games like Splatoon that do utilize this, you would have to go for the wireless version. I'll go into more detail about the similarities to the official GameCube controller towards the end of the video. So last thing I want to talk about that will be relevant to the general user of this controller and what really just sells it for me is the portability of this controller. Now I'm a person who plays Smash Bros just about everywhere he goes and I'm fortunate enough to have a lot of friends who own Nintendo Switches. However, while most of the venues will be with a dock in front of a TV, not everybody owns the USB GameCube adapter that's needed to use your GameCube controller, especially because because they're so hard to find. Meaning if I'm visiting one of these places, I have to bring my adapter and my controller if I wanna use my GameCube controller to play Smash. It gets even more complicated if we're meeting up at some place like the Student Center or just trying to play on the go. With the Switch having only one little USB-C slot, you'll have to have your controller, your adapter, and a USB-C to USB adapter or some kind of dock to even use your GameCube controller. Now, of course, you don't need your GameCube controller everywhere you go to play Smash in order to have fun. But if your only other option is to use Joy-Cons, I think this is a pretty decent argument because I haven't met a single person who likes playing most games, but especially Smash, on these tiny Joy-Cons. It is for that reason that most times that I'm on the go, I have this controller in my bag along with my Switch instead of carrying my GameCube controller and having everything that goes with it. Just to bring it up again, this controller functions as a pro controller. So really you're completely set anywhere you go. Now, unfortunately, just by design, this isn't something that applies to the wired version, unfortunately. It's a USB controller, means you need the dock or some kind of adapter wherever you go. Still easier than your regular GameCube controller because you don't need this thing but that's something to consider. So to wrap it up on a general level, would I recommend either of these controllers? I absolutely would recommend both of them as Nintendo Switch Pro controllers. The lightness of this controller does kind of bother me and the fact that it's not portable means I'm not gonna be using it as much as this controller. However, the build quality on both of them, the feeling of the sticks and the buttons are a pretty rare find as far as third-party controllers go. They are more than usable for most of the times I'm playing Smash Bros outside of bracket and it's what I use to play most of my Switch games. The price is good on both of them. I can imagine a lot of people will just be satisfied with $25 version if they don't need all the features that having a wireless controller would give you. But if you are looking for a wireless controller, it more than justifies, in my opinion, at least for what I do, its price point. And in fact, I'm probably going to be picking up a second one of these. Whatever I'm traveling, I will just bring two of them to be able to play one-on-one -on -one matches without using these. Overall, I'm very, very happy with them. And if your needs fall into what I described, I can definitely recommend them. But how do they perform in competitive Smash? Now, because this channel's name is Zenith SSPM, and if I remember correctly, some people that asked regarding if the power controllers can be used with Melee because of their GameCube inspired design. I'll touch upon that pretty quickly. The answer is the softest maybe to a no. And the biggest reason is it's a Switch controller. So neither of these controllers will be compatible with any setup that you encounter at a Smash tournament. You can't use either on a GameCube or Wii. So the only way you can actually play Melee with these is if you're running Dolphin on your computer. Now, as far as I know, there's no good way to really pair this controller with your computer yet. I'm sure there will be if there isn't already. But the easiest route to go if you absolutely wanna do this is to buy the wired version because it's obviously USB compatible. Now when you plug it into your computer, it'll actually just recognize it as a general generic USB controller, which is pretty good. You'll just have to map all the buttons individually through Dolphin. But the one killer, the one killer for this, which is a little deceptive, 
are the analog triggers and the fact that they actually aren't analog triggers. So because this is a GameCube inspired controller, we have triggers that are more like an official GameCube controller's triggers. However, that entire press without clicking all the way at the bottom is not registered by the controller at all. It's only digital. It might as well just be a flat button. If you play Melee, you kind of know where I'm going with this. You won't be able to light shield or light L cancel with this controller at all, which if you're playing Melee in basically any serious capacity, that's going to be a pretty big deal. For me, it means harder Marth killers. I tend to light shield when I shield drop. You'll be missing a lot of tech windows by not L canceling with a light press, which to be fair, I miss and do a hard press most of my L cancels anyway, but now you will for sure miss all of them. Not to mention you still need to press all the way down for it to count for anything. So if you're doing something like a short hop dare, normally your L cancel will start to be active when you just start pressing down on the trigger. But now this whole movement isn't counted for anything. So it will only be active once you press all the way down, which if you're used to a standard L cancel timing can really mess you up. It is for that reason and just the fact that you have to go through Dolphin to map out everything. And to be honest, it doesn't feel that great playing Melee anyway. Everything feels a little more clunky, the same way that using a generic adapter with a GameCube controller that isn't recognized as a Wii U adapter, or using your May Flash adapter on PC mode would make you map out everything individually and treat the controller as a generic controller. It just doesn't feel right, and it doesn't feel as good as plugging in an official GameCube controller to a GameCube or a Wii or using an official adapter or a Wii U compatible adapter on your computer and just using Dolphin's native support. So technically usable, yes. Recommended, no. On to Smash Ultimate. Ow. So a lot of what was said about these controllers when I was talking about them generally applies to them in Ultimate. In Ultimate, they still overall feel pretty good. The buttons and sticks still are on the stiff side. However, with a little bit of breaking in, they'll feel just fine. And they're overall so much better than a lot of third-party controllers that are out there. Really, when it comes to feel, my biggest complaint is the fact that actually the sticks click in. Now, it's really just more apparent when I'm more rough on my presses. But once in a while, I still manage to accidentally click down on my stick when I don't mean to. Now, in the game, it has no effect. However, that unfamiliar feeling of clicking down can kind of throw you off when you're doing certain technical things. Again, not the biggest deal in the world. Certainly when you're playing casual smash with your friends, you're not going to really care about this. But again, if you choose to bring this into tournament, it could be something that can throw you off, especially if you're really used to a standard GameCube controller. Since this controller acts exactly like a pro controller, also keep that in mind if you choose to bring this into a tournament because you're going to have to pair it up to your setup, similar to how you would with any pro controller. Now there is no option to have this wired in, so also keep that in mind. I'm also not saying you can't do well in tournament with this or that you can't pull off anything technical. In fact, I'll show you a little bit of gameplay that I recorded with both of these controllers. I'm trying to pick up Peach, so I'm trying to learn her offline combos right now, which at least for me right now are pretty difficult to do even with my regular GameCube controller that I'm really comfortable with. So this is just to show that yes, it's possible on these controllers. So Power Ace states that their wired and wireless controllers are inspired by the official GameCube controller design, and I believe them. To the untrained eye, both of these controllers may look completely identical. However, there still are some differences between them, which as a avid user of the GameCube controller are pretty significant. I imagine a lot of people viewing this also are very familiar with the GameCube controller, and especially competitive Smash Bros players are very, very picky with the feel of their controller. Just as most people are with equipment used in competition, a slight change can mean a huge difference. So let's go over a few of those now. Excluding things that are pretty obvious like the Pro Controller having additional buttons. Starting with the buttons, overall it may be extremely hard to tell, but the buttons on the Power A controller are a little bit more flat on their face than the official GameCube controller. 
this is really kind of negligible and even someone as picky as me doesn't really feel it too much and it doesn't really bother me especially because there are other things different between these two controllers that my mind is i guess more focused on again might be a little bit hard to tell but the c stick on the power a controller is also more flat than what you'll find on a regular official controller this you tend to notice a little bit more if you watch some of my reviews on Nintendo GameCube controller buttons, a lot of replacement buttons happen to have flat control sticks, C sticks, and buttons. And that's something that kind of bothers me, just being somebody who is, again, very picky. So it's definitely brought back feelings of that. It's not by any means unplayable. It's just not my absolute preference, and I do notice it more than the flatness of the buttons. However, luckily, the control stick doesn't suffer from this at all. In fact, it's actually even more domed than the GameCube controller which I actually kind of prefer. I like a more dome stick, personally. One of the biggest changes to the front face of the controller that depending on what you're doing may make a big difference is a huge improvement on the part of the Power A controller, and that is in the D-pad. If you compare the two D-pads of these controllers, you'll notice that the GameCube controller has this really small D-pad. It reminds me of the same one that's on the Game Boy Advance, just maybe even smaller. As much as I love this controller, the D-pad is always something that me and a lot of other people never really liked. Thankfully, controller companies had a lot of time to look at this design and improve upon it. And that's exactly what we get here. I'm a huge fan of this D-pad. It's huge. I never get any missed inputs. All the buttons feel really crisp. And although I really only use it to do things like input my name, it's a really good feeling compared to having to use the control stick or having to use a mushy D-pad on the GameCube controller, which I tend to get a lot of missed inputs with. Moving on to the top of the controller, you'll notice that there's another significant difference. Well, not only the power controller having two Z buttons, but the triggers of the power controller actually being significantly smaller than what you'll find on an official controller. Out of all the differences on this controller, this is the one that's the most apparent to me. If you guys don't already know, I tend to grip my controller really weird, where my ring finger is assigned to my trigger, and my middle finger is assigned to my Z button. Now I have pretty average sized hands, but having this grip with the controller after some time does tend to feel a little bit cramped. I do wish there was a little bit more spacing like there is on an official controller. However, it's not something that's a huge barrier. Usually if anything, my thumb starts hurting just from normal play if I'm playing a very fast character anyway, much before I get any pain in these fingers from the triggers. Of course, this is technically a pro controller, even if it's shaped like a GameCube controller. So you have your L, your R, and your Z, L, and Z, R buttons. Again, games like Smash Bros or any other game considers this a pro controller, meaning you'll map it out accordingly, just like a pro controller. Which is good if you want an extra button that you wouldn't have otherwise on an official controller. Moving on to the shell, it's kind of easy to see that the back of the controller on the Power A is missing. It's kind of weird lump that you get on the GameCube controller. Now, unless you grip your controller in a very obscure way, with a standard grip or my grip or really almost any grip in between, my fingers don't really cross over this section. So the fact that it's flat doesn't really make any difference to me. However, if you rest your fingers, say, on this lump, you'll find that it's not there. Here's some quick shots of the back of the controller. To give you a weight comparison between the three controllers, the official controller will come around 195 grams. The Power A controller is just a little bit heavier than that, at around 205 grams. Now, when I'm holding either of these controllers, they both feel heavy and solid. As mentioned before, the wired version is very light coming in at 140 grams, which to give a little bit of context is just about the weight of an empty shell plus one additional faceplate. So if weight is a huge factor for you, you'll find that the Power A controller is very similar to an official controller, if that's what you're used to. And the wired controller is just very light. Again, that might not bother everybody, but for me, certainly it's something I can feel. Now there is also a question of what is inside of one of these controllers, as well as if you're able to swap out any parts with a GameCube controller. So I'll be taking apart the wired controller. Now the internals of this and the wireless controller are mostly similar. I chose to open up this version of the controller because the video that I recommended in the beginning of the video actually shows him opening up the wireless version of the controller. So I wanted to open up this controller to be able to provide footage of both of these controllers being opened. To open it, all you'll need is a Phillips head screwdriver. That's the one I'm using. And all the screws on the back are laid out the exact same as a GameCube controller. They are also all the same length. 
Removing the back, you'll find a very familiar layout of triggers, and taking out these little two short screws removes the trigger plate and allows access to the trigger itself. Now the spring from these controllers will be compatible with GameCube controllers and vice versa, but unfortunately it ends there as all other remaining parts of the trigger are not compatible. To answer the question of if a trigger plug will work with the triggers of this controller? The answer unfortunately is no. Standard trigger plugs that work with official Nintendo GameCube controllers will not actually fit in the triggers of the Power 8 controller. Tall or short, it doesn't matter, neither works. Looking at the faceplate, you'll be able to see a few differences, such as this plastic brace, which is actually reinforcing both the D-pad and the C-stick. To get to the other side, you'll have to take out these two small screws. The Z buttons, as you can see, are also very different. Now the board itself, as you can see, has a completely different shape. Even the button pads, you can see with the D-pad here, has these little plastic legs that actually keep it inserted into the board. The four buttons in the middle have one singular pad, and all the front-facing buttons and its button pad have different shapes compared to the GameCube controller. Now this was the saddest thing for me because I was hoping if for some reason the button pads were able to be swapped, it could potentially make the feeling of the buttons even better, removing all stiffness by using the official GameCube controller button pads. Now I'm sure the part you've all been waiting for, are the sticks compatible? And unfortunately the answer is no. Although both the control stick and the C stick on both controllers are all compatible with each other. So if you want to have a Power A double C stick only controller, you could have it as long as you buy two controllers and make the swap. And aside from that, that's basically it. So guys, we are now at the end of the video. I really hope that the information provided is useful to you in your decision on whether or not to purchase this controller. Me personally, I've been loving it. And if you happen to already own this controller, I'd be very curious to know what you guys think of it. This was a longer video than I usually make, and I'm kind of still getting back into the swing of things and making videos. So I'd like to thank each and every one of you for sticking by with me through the past couple months. A little while ago, we surpassed 10,000 subscribers, and we should be over 12,000 by the time I upload this. So even if it sounds generic, I just want to say thank you guys for the support. It just means so much to know that you guys are still behind me, regardless of how frequently I'm able to turn out videos. If you guys have any questions, feel free to hit me up on Twitter. I'm going to be putting a lot of work in the near future into my Discord. Both will be linked in the description. I try to get to as many YouTube comments as I can. However, I'm generally easier to reach on Discord or Twitter. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please consider liking and subscribing. This has been Zenith, signing off.